Hey there, you're back with the Mench Warmers, uh, bringing you all the news and information about Jews and sports. Hello! Uh, we're taping in Gabe's house this time, a different location for us. It's a real twist for us. We've got no air conditioning, but we do have uh, a pretty nice balcony. Yeah, and uh, little banana candies that you seem to keep on hand. Exactly. Always a welcome treat. This time it's my significant other who's hiding in their bedroom. That's right. Um, so it's getting towards the end of the summer, end of August, not a lot of sports going on, but a few things to talk about just in terms of news. And then we'll get to the bulk of our, uh, program today, which is about the NFL, both previewing the season to come and talking a little bit about NFL players in the past. A uh, very exciting. There's some Jewish history, uh, afoot, which we'll discuss later, as well as some current Judaism from the owner to the player level. Uh, but first we've got some reader feedback. We've got two uh, pieces of information. Perhaps the first most exciting one is we got a note from a reader whose name is, or a listener whose name is, don't forget, Christina. Wow. I know, real twist. Who wrote in to inform us that Steph Curry's tattoo is a 1st Corinthians, as we learned, which is commonly interpreted to be instructions on founding a church. Interesting. Which is not something we talked about necessarily early. We surmise what it'd be about. But Stephen Curry is looking. He's got written on his arm in Hebrew in case he was Jesus. Right. He'd be able to get that Aramaic understanding of what it's all about. I can understand that. If I could shoot as well as he did, I would have a, a Messiah complex to a certain degree. I've said this before and I've said it again. I totally understand religious athletes. Every single prayer they've ever had in their lives has come perfectly true. Yeah, it's true. He's living a great life and, uh, you know, who knows the, who knows the cause? Exactly. Okay. So that's, Um, that's good listener feedback. I I don't know where we got a listener named Christina, Christina, but a little foreshadowing to a discussion later, we will be talking about another Jewish Christina. So there you go. How exciting. Yeah. Uh, and number two is apparently the blueberry buns, which we have discussed in more than one episode and has become somewhat of a theme of the show, sure. are available at Nortown. Yes, I've also heard that, which is literally, uh, we could, I'd say, throw a baseball from my house to there. As uh, long as it wasn't you throwing it. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll see. Well, we'll see. We'll get up onto the roof and start throwing baseballs <laughs> at, at, at the storefront window. That's a good way to get uh, blacklisted. From Nortown. Yeah. You don't eat meat. That's not a thing for you. I know, but I still might want the blueberry buns now that I know they exist there. Maybe. That's yeah. true. You can send me in your stead. I don't even like going in there. It's, so, it's such a butcher shop. I mean, it is a butcher it shop. It is literally yeah. a butcher shop. Well, I know. So even if they have other things that I might want on occasion, I'd, I'd rather go somewhere else. For the understanding, for those who may not be aware in the Toronto Bathurst Nicholson Jewish community, Nortown is a kosher style butcher shop yeah. and that they only serve kosher things, but I don't think a rabbi has ever been near the place. No, I don't think so. I think it's just sort of, yeah, exactly. There's no milk products, but, uh, no. you know, I don't know if there's anything it's kosher per se. It's filling the void that daters left behind in the neighborhood. I do know that apparently they will give you chicken bones, uh, either for free or for very small amount of money, apparently. Like Home Depot with wood pallets. Yeah, it's like if you want to make stock, in the same way that if you want to make a pallet table, Home Depot is like, yeah, you can have this trash that we're just going to throw out. <laughs> um, That's very kind of them. Yeah, just a quick quick update news-wise, a uh, little follow-up to our episode last week. Uh, thanks again to Marvin Glassman for coming on and, and telling us about the history of Jews and tennis. It is the U.S. Open right now. As we're taping, uh, we're just through the first and, and getting into the second round. But so far, our two Jewish male uh, tennis players, uh, Denis Shapovalov and Diego Schwartzman, are both through to the second round. Uh, Dennis had a big upset of fellow Canadian F- Felix Auger Aliassim, uh, and moving on to the second round. And he's got you know he's got a decent shot now of getting through at least into the third or fourth round, which would be a, a, a successful tournament. It would be amazing for, for Denis Shapovalov. Do we know of any Jew other than the ones that Marvin Glassman told us about that have made it so far in a major? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, you know, we, we got some great feedback on that episode, but uh, Marvin had a very comprehensive list of, of the Jews who have made it that far, not yep. counting uh, Sampras, of course. Who, and not Marty Fish. Yeah, not and not Marty Fish. Um Sharon Fishman, who we talked about last time as well, uh, is playing with uh, recent Canadian Open champion Bianca Andreescu in the doubles. Uh, so we'll see how they do. That's a big Canadian team and, you know, has a shot at being a uh, maybe even Olympics contenders in, in next year in Tokyo. Absolutely. Very exciting to see some Canadian and Canadian Jewish Olympians. Yeah. But let's move on now uh, and talk about some football. Are you yeah. ready for some football? 
Eh. On anything but a Saturday night, let's a say. A little. Yeah. That's right. Anything anything but a Saturday night. Well, it's, you know, there is something interesting about football, uh, professional football at least, that it, it, at, least in, at least in America, let's say, and that it is the only thing that sort of – the only time it's not played is on Shabbat, right? So they play Thursday night. Think about and this. And then nothing Friday, nothing Saturday – uh, except sometimes Saturday late at night in the winter, like yeah. a, like a Jewish wedding that that takes place at five p.m. on a on a December day, not unlike my own, <laughs> and then and then back to it on Sunday and Monday on some cold December Eve. Exactly. I, I remember Dave Goss in our second episode talked about a book about uh, uh, Jewish Tottenham soccer fans or Jewish right. Tottenham football fans right european football European football because does your rabbi know you're here Yeah. So I wonder for most. Football fans, it would be, does your reverend care where you went after church? Yeah, I mean, I think that's sort of part and parcel of, of American football fans. Probably Traditionally, you know, sort of church ends by 1230 and, and you're home for a football game. Although it does remind me, you're mentioning soccer. I did see a, an article recently. Uh, it was on the JC.com, and it was about Borham, Borham Wood Football Club, which uh-huh. is, I think, like a, a fourth or fifth level uh, European soccer team. Uh, Borham? More like... Borum bored them, the, yeah. the crowds. Nice try with that. Thanks. Anyways, they're selling officially licensed uh, Borum Wood Keepas ah, for eight pounds. That's very exciting. Yeah. Eight pounds. Looked what a it. steal. Yeah. Borum Wood is the is the hometown or near there is the hometown of uh, American Idol judge and whatever he does now, Simon Cowell. Wow. Yeah. Is he Jewish? Uh, we're going to have to fact check that one. Anyways, uh, back we got to- got our producer Alex on that one. Yeah. I think he, I think he is, at least part. Um, apparently that's not, that's not good for the people. Yeah. According, according to the sources, that article said that, uh, Jews constitute approximately 40% of attendees on Saturdays. So no way. not a particularly religious community. That's fine. But, uh, attending football games on Saturdays, a quick Google search finds Simon Cowell's partner to be named Lauren Silverman. Wow. That's a pretty good giveaway. Uh, and our producer is handing me a phone that says his paternal grandmother was a Polish Jewish immigrant and his father was from a mostly Jewish family. His mother was Christian, but we'll take him. I guess. I don't know. Is is he is he cool? I feel like Simon Cowell's fine, right? He's up and down. Yeah. Anyways, um, so back to real American football. Uh, yeah. You know, certainly college football obviously played all day Saturday, and uh, I feel Canadian football played Friday nights. I feel like the CFL's given up on the Jewish fandom. Do you know a single Jewish CFL fan? Yeah, I think that would require Jews to live in like Edmonton and stuff like that, which I'm told they do, but I don't know if I really believe it. Every time I meet a Jew from Calgary, I'm just like, wow, really? Calgary? How did that happen? I know a couple of Jews from Calgary, but they all left. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's like it's like Jews from Manitoba. It's like someone's grandfather was from from Winnipeg, yeah. but no one current, not that many Jews currently living there. They got handed a train ticket at some point when they got off the boat. Anyway, so... American football, you know, something that Jews can embrace in terms of it's uh, the days of the week in which it's played. And uh, we thought we'd highlight a few current uh, Jewish NFLers that are, are going to the season. Uh, a few big names. Uh, obviously, Ju- Julian Edelman. Uh, he's the athlete, really. You know, we started this podcast talking about what does it mean to be a Jewish athlete? Someone who has uh, struggled to a certain degree with their Jewish identity and how much they've embraced it. But coming off a season where he – and a playoffs where he won the Super Bowl MVP – Reigning he's, Super Bowl, Bowl MVP. Yeah, he's going to be a big option for the Patriots. I mean, I know they've uh, – Josh Gordon's back and uh, Nikhil Harry, who's a Toronto boy, who they picked in the first round. Is, he's not uh, Jewish, though. No, he's not Jewish. Um, but other wide receivers. But Julian Edelman, you know, planning on having a big career uh, – sorry, a big season with the Patriots. Absolutely. We'd hope so. And another Patriot uh, who we know to be Jewish is Nate Ebner. That's right. Former both rugby Olympian and pro football player Nate Ebner. And he recently – uh, traveled to uh, Haaretz, the Holy Land, with owner Robert Kraft. Yeah, this is very timely. So um, earlier today, we saw, we saw there was an article in the Players' Tribune written by uh, Nate Ebner. Well, not written by Nate Ebner, <laughs> but attributed to Nate Ebner. I mean, I don't think it's a secret that the articles on the Players' Tribune are not truly written by the let's players. Say, let's say written by a different Jewish guy who knows Nate Ebner. <laughs> written by the ghost of Nate Ebner. That's right. Um, anyways, Nate Ebner went on a trip with uh, Bob Kraft and the other Patriots to Israel. And apparently, this is a trip that they do every offseason. Wow. So, I don't remember seeing anything about it before that it's gotten publicity. But Nate was talking about how, or he wrote about how this is the first time he went. He had been, you know, it was incredibly meaningful to him as someone who grew up Jewish. Uh, and with a pretty significant Jewish education, he said, to go to Israel for the first time and to be there with his teammates and, and experience all that. You know, it's sort of interesting. I mean, it's sort of like... Um, oh, yeah. He's a hairy man. Yeah. For this, this is sort of like the opposite of... Uh, Israel often gets accused of 
you know, greenwashing or pinkwashing uh, some of its politics away by like embracing different things. I feel like this is Bob, the opposite of that for Bob Kraft, <laughs> where it's like that, he can wash away the stink of this past off season by just like right, you know, just like a good PR trip to Israel with a bunch of his te- a bunch of the athletes who he employs, right. you know, I, going to I, the Jordan I, River and things like that. A listener asked us if we had actually found the Yiddish word for hand job, oh, as we asked in the first episode, and oh, um, we did not. Yeah. I'm not sure there is one, but if you speak flu- fluent enough Yiddish uh, and are able to tell I mean, us... There's a literal translation for those words, but it doesn't right. have the same meaning. So, right. Yeah, that's true. There must be some Yiddishism that... What's that hand explains. in Yiddish? Uh, hand. Hand. I believe. Well, I know a lot of words for winner, I haven't. So. I haven't studied Yiddish in 17-odd years, so, you know... Right. It, it's a little rusty. So, you, you, you know Abyssal. Yeah. There's a shtickle of Yiddish that has stuck with you. Yeah. So Nate Ebner uh, returning to the Patriots this year, looking to have another season as they unfortunately as try to continue their dominance. Uh, the other big Jewish NFLer at this moment is Josh Rosen. That's uh, right, Rosen the chosen a, Rosen. Chosen Rosen, uh, the unchosen Rosen this time because the team he was on has chosen somebody else. <laughs> so like like uh, like many a, uh, a, a ham eater, uh, a ham eating Jew, they have turned away from the from the true fat faith. And embraced a, a non-Jewish quarterback. Uh, well, and and as Josh Rosen has gone, like many a kosher Jewish person has moved to Miami. Yeah, that's Just right. he's done it about 40 years earlier than most people. That's right. So J- Josh Rosen, uh, formerly of the Arizona Cardinals, spent one year there. Uh, they hired a new coach who didn't jive with him very well, I guess. They traded him to Miami where he's going to be competing with a, for a job with uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh seems like Rosen will probably get a shot at it at some point. Fitzpatrick's a journeyman. He's had, you know, the Fitz magic from time to time yep. and uh, can be an electric player. But Rosen is, is likely to get a shot at least. He's a second-year player, and he still has huge potential as a first-round pick. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, hopefully, you know, you'd love to see the Miami Jewish community embrace him. I mean, there's also plenty of – I know certainly, and I'm sure you do as well, you know, Canadian Jews who go down to Florida in the winter who are, who are big who are Dolphins fans. Absolutely, big Josh Rosen fans. Who will be J- Josh Rosen fans. I mean – He's he's got a very uh, you know he, he's a pretty Jewish guy and um, you know it'll be interesting to see how he does there. Wish him all all the muzzle. Oh, it's very exciting. great. Big muzzle, big muzzle to Josh yeah. Rosen, and we'll have a lot of nachas if he uh, if he performs well. But we've got sort of a an extended uh, segment that you guys have come to know and love as our listeners. Uh, we like to call it Jew or Not Jew. That's right. And uh, Jamie and I have split up the NFL. Jamie taking the national football conference that's right and gabe taking the american football conference we're going to talk about the owners of the teams and quiz each other on whether or not we think we're they're jewish or not so do you want to start with the afc or the nfc let's have our producer alex decide alex is signaling to me AFC. to start with the afc so All right, gabe go ahead that's me to start let me hear it um just so you know where i what i'm going to do here is i'm going to name an owner i'm going to I think just the name, and then Jamie will try and make a decision on whether or right. not they're Jewish. If he can't decide, I'll give him clues. Yeah, we do it clues. spelling bee style, where you you know you can get the 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 city of origin sometimes, or that's right. Uh, you know the spelling. Spelling can sometimes be perhaps a thing. what related corporate board they sit on. <laughs> exactly. That tends to be a very large clue. Yeah, as we'll see with many. Um, All right, so let's go with the uh, the new the new conference, the American Football the conference. American Football Conference, and I'm gonna go full name here. I'm okay. not gonna I'm not gonna talk about any sort of Short name, I'm going to say. What is their Wikipedia source? Right. Full name. And the team, the team that they own. I do want to point out a lot of the things the Jewish football owners I found here, whether or not they were Jewish, came from somebody's website called semiticcontroversies.blogspot.com, which I do not believe is a website, after reading much of it today, that is very friendly to the Jews. <laughs> on second thought, on second thought, it might not be the most uh, you know appealing one. I mean, However, I think it would be fairly accurate in determining who is a Jew because it probably is a right. bit of a, a about as an open interpretation as we do. I mean, it's sort of funny, you know. This is a sort of uh, meta moment for our podcast that you know there are people out there cataloging Jews in different ways in terms of their celebrity or you know wealth and things like that as a as a way of pointing out some sort of. Jewish conspiracy that runs the world and, you know, That's the right. idiotic notions that are in anti-Semitic notions that are in their head. And, you know, I would say that I, I, I know this is obvious to anyone listening to our podcast, but we should make it explicitly clear. When we're talking about the Jews who own NFL teams, we say it with a tremendous amount of pride. <laughs> like we are proud that this many Jews own oh, NFL yeah. teams. Way- we, we maybe not personally aspire to own NFL teams, but 
it's a very nice thing that so many, you know, we, we th- take it as a point of pride that so many Jews have, have made it in America in a way that they uh, own NFL teams. And I, I've certainly done a little looking into, into how some of these people absolutely acquired these teams and where they got from. It's interesting stories about, about you know, uh, uh, how these people made it. Yeah. And, and uh, success against odds. I've, in doing some research, I think the right way to phrase it is that there are a lot of people who catalog the achievements and social mobility of Jews. Right. Unlike most, we tend to view that as a positive thing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, we're going to continue with it here. So let me begin. Okay. Um, I'm going to start. I sort of did it mostly in alphabetical order. Okay. With the owner of the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. Uh, Stephen J. Biscotti. Biscotti. Um Biscotti like is is I O T T I at the end. That's right. Stephen is 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 you know could be a Jew, but I, I'm gonna say Biscotti is not Jewish. Well, as he is on the board of the Associated Catholic Charities of mm-hmm. the United States, yeah, he is not Jewish. So we're gonna move on past the Baltimore Ravens to uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay, where this is a really interesting one because this I feel this name could either be a Mike Jacobs All Star or somebody we have no idea about. Michael Brown. Oh, Michael Brown. Um. I would say that because the name the name is is could definitely be a Jew, but based on what I know of Michael Brown, I believe he is not Jewish. So Michael Brown, the name Brown is indeed the same Brown as the Cleveland Browns. Yes, and that his father, Paul Brown, founded the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, uh, he is very much not Jewish. Yeah, we're gonna move on. The owner of the Cleveland Browns and yep. the CEO of the Flying J Truck Stop chain. Okay, James Arthur Haslam the Third. Yeah, I know. I, I'm pretty sure Jimmy Haslam is not Jewish. Jimmy Haslam is not Jewish, yeah. from what we know. Uh, he is a native of Knoxville, Tennessee, and the elder brother of a former governor of Tennessee, okay. which pretty much disqualifies him in both yeah, ways. I think so. Um, and, okay, so three we for moved three, on. Yeah. We're three for three. Next, we're going to go. So he is currently the controlling shareholder because there are several people who are dead okay. who actually on the team, okay. but the owner of the Denver Broncos, Joseph Ellis. Oh, sorry. I said that wrong. Josiah Ellis. Josiah Ellis. You know, if it had been Joseph, I would have thought about it because I would have said, well, Ellis, it could have been uh, El- 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 Eliasson or Ellisberg or something like that. But Josiah, I think, is too biblical for it to be a Jew in a, in a roundabout way. So I'm going to say not a Jew. So I will clarify he is the child of Nancy Walker Bush. Yeah. Okay. Not a Jew. Right. Very much at all. We're four for four. Oh, for four for Jews. Right. Four for four for Jamie. This has been easy. This has all been just, you know. Yep. Uh, we now won't go into our NFL second owners. straight dead NFL owner. Uh, died last year. Yeah. He's worth $3.3 billion. Robert C. McNair. Uh, McNair. It seems the like an easy giveaway. Houston Texans. Not Jewish. It is. Uh. Very, very, yes, not Jewish. Yeah. Um, 0 for 5. AFC, not a lot of Jews so far. No, 0 for 5. Moving on. James Ursay. Okay. So, owner of the Indianapolis Colts and um, huge deadhead. Yeah. So Jim Ursay, not exactly a uh, someone who to be proud of, not necessarily. <laughs> but I do know that Ur- the Ursays are Jewish. They are Jewish. However, they were raised Catholic. Oh, wow. Jim Ursay was. However... Once his father died, in finding out his father's sort of family history upon death, learned they were Jewish oh, wow. and began to adopt and become their Jewish faith. He is a graduate of Southern Methodist University. Oh, that's wild. Which would imply not he was Jewish. However, he is absolutely Jewish. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, Jim Mercer is a weird dude. He's like, you know, gotten in trouble for... Uh, driving under the influence of pills and things like that. He, he loves the dead. He has a ridiculous like guitar collection and stuff like that, right? Absolutely. Uh, he owns the guitar that Bob Dylan plugged in with at the Newport Folk Festival. Cool. He bought it for a million dollars, and I think that should stay in the in the you know religion. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. I I feel like those people are just being taken advantage of. Where they're they're, they're like, oh, you want this old guitar I have lying around that has no particular value? You're gonna pay me a million dollars for it? Great. This is a, this is a great piece of memorabilia. Absolutely. Have at it, you know. Some of the things he does own, uh, he owns the original manuscript of On the Road. Yeah, I know that. The scroll, right? Yeah, yeah. the original scroll for $2.5 million. And he also owns the original handwritten Rules of Alcoholics Anonymous. Cool. Which, 
I apparently, mean, he's never read. He might, yeah, he could stand yeah. to read them. Apparently, so Jim Irsay, a Jew, at least in part. Yep, Irsay is a Jewish family. So one, one for whatever we are so far. So we're one for six. One for six. Uh, Jamie but is I've correct them all. all the time. This is this is like you're seeing my keen Judar at work here. <laughs> You know, I was able to pick a McNair, McNair's analysis out of uh, this one, the lineup. This one might be very hard. Yeah. He is the richest Pakistani on earth, Shahid Khan. Okay. Shahid Khan is not Jewish, but I feel like he's a real philo Semite. Like, I feel like all his friends are Jews. And, like, he's talked about it before. Like, he, he's, you know, a Florida billionaire. He's right. he, he's rubbed elbows with your, uh, your, your Jewish uh, billionaires. Next one. Uh I think this guy's name is hilarious. Okay. I don't know. He is the son of a titan of American soccer. Clark Hunt. Clark Hunt? What team does he own? Clark Hunt owns the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. He is also the owner of the league, Major League Soccer, as a business. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm going to say Clark Hunt's not Jewish. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Is that correct? Clark Hunt is not Jewish. He is the grandson of a oil tycoon named... Well, they're going to named... Haroldson Lafayette Hunt. Nice. So, unlikely Jewish. Harold's Do you think there's Lafayette. any Jew who has Lafayette as part of their name? I feel like that would be a bridge no, too far. No, well, I think that would be a bridge too far. Although, you know, could you imagine? Oh, yes, I'm taking lessons from my bar mitzvah teacher. Lafayette Rubenstein. Yeah. Although, of course, uh, the Marquis de Lafayette in Hamilton was originated by David Diggs, who is Jewish. <laughs> no, seriously. Next, we are moving on to the Los Angeles Chargers. Somebody we've actually spoken to before. Spoken to or spoken of? of before. Okay. Spoken to, you know, to the concept. Dean Alexander Spanos. Oh, Dean Spanos, not Jewish. Not Jewish. Yeah. He's a little Greek for that. Yeah. Next, currently in controversy, Stephen M. Ross, who owns the Time Warner Center, the Hudson Yards Redevelopment Project, uh, and Hard Rock Cafe, and the Miami Dolphins. Oh yeah. Um. Oh, I, I feel like I should know this because he's been in the news. I'm going to say Stephen Ross is Jewish. Stephen Ross. The donator of over $200 million to his alma mater, the University of Michigan, and the football team. The single largest gift in the history of the university is Jewish. Oh, nice. I got it. That's raised, tough. Because yeah. Ross can be lots of things. I mean, it could be it could be short for Rossi or something like that. Um, plenty of Jews with Ross in it, I guess. Absolutely. Like it Jeff Ross. Be, it could be very, very difficult. But I, t- I take that back. Jeff Ross is, I think, a, a first name, middle name kind of guy. Like, a like the comedian, Jeff Ross? Yeah, he's like a Jason Alexander type. Right, like a Jeffrey Ross Schneidenberg. Jeffrey Ross uh, Lifschultz. Lifschultz. Oh, thank is, you is very much. Me. Thank you for the... So uh, I don't know where Stephen Ross got his name that. from, but uh, probably probably somewhere. Changed somewhere. Uh, now Who's we go next? to one of our favorite owners. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, the owner of the New England Patriots and receiver of the... Um, Han B- Keckel, okay. that we say. Uh, Our old friend Bob Kraft. Robert Kenneth Kraft, yeah. the chairman of Kraft, uh, with assets in paper, packaging, sports, and entertainment. Uh, he is also the owner of the Boston Uprising, the yeah. first esports team in New England. Definitely a Jew. Been discussed many times. I know that one. I always, th- I always thought Kraft was, was associated with Kraft Foods, but he's not. No, totally, totally separate. Yeah. So he owns this esports team. Do you think you have to be that rich and that old? Before your parents question if you're involved in esports, <laughs> as a Jew, yeah, we haven't covered Jewish esports because I don't think there are a lot of Jews who are allowed to play video games as much <laughs> as one would require to be to become an esports. Well, that's, pro. A, to- that's a topic for another another podcast. If we uh, if we want to classify esports as sports, I mean, we'll get it's competition. We'll, we'll get yeah, there. Yeah, we'll eventually. get there someday. So we've been through Bob Kraft. You're all perfect. Here we have Robert Wood Johnson. Uh, honor Ro- of the New York Jets. Yeah, not not Jewish, Robert Johnson. No. So still um, perfect. We've got a few more here in the perfect. AFC. Just uh, four more. Uh, perhaps an interesting one. Mark Clark Davis. Wow, Mark Clark. Mark Clark Davis. Uh, Mark Clark Davis. Mark Davis is the owner of the Raiders. That's and right. And I know he's Jewish because I know Al Davis is Jewish. He is absolutely Jewish. Al Davis, really controversial guy, as is Mark Clark Davis. Um, Al Davis was sort of a tyrannical owner who fought with the media, fought with his players, fought with the league. Yeah. But uh, as many uh, powerful Jewish people did at the time, fought extremely hard for civil rights. Oh. In fact, uh, threatened to take his team out of the NFL and refuse to play games in states that still observe segregation. I didn't know that. That's great. Yeah. So he put pressure on the U.S. government as football was a growing business and growing cultural uh, moment to uh, 
for pressure to integrate uh, southern yeah. United States as he refused to take his team to Florida. He refused to take his team to Georgia. He refused to take his team to Texas, um, which were, were very wow. powerful moves. As well, uh, he hired the first uh, female front office employees oh, cool. anywhere in the NFL. That's so, great. Uh, I didn't Mark, know that about, about Al Davis. Al and Mark Davis are very progressive guys, although um, somewhat, um, how do you say, um, what's the word? Challenge. Off kilter. Off kilter. Off kilter. Uh, similarly, Mark Davis uh, has publicly, uh, in response to Donald Trump criticizing NFL players, has publicly come out in support of and allowed his team members to protest any way they see fit. That's nice. Um, as well, as long as they're willing to speak to the media about the meaning of their protest. And wear proper helmets. And wear proper <laughs> helmets. That's right. As we talk about now. As and our... now Mark Davis doing the very Jewish move of uh, taking his team to Vegas. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to a city built by Jews. Um, interestingly, uh, Mark Davis and Al Davis were very close with Tommy Smith. Uh, the, okay, sure. Uh, Olympic athlete who famously raised the black power fist upon winning a gold medal in 1968 in Mexico City. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, we've got... Arthur Joseph Rooney II, the uh, okay, owner so of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Art Rooney, uh, long longtime owners of the Steelers, the Rooney family, are, are not Jews. No. Yeah. They are uh, Pittsburgh Irish Catholics. Yeah. Moving on to the only woman who owns a team in the uh, AFC. AFC, Amy Adams. Strunk. Not okay. the actress Amy Adams, who I do believe is Jewish, uh, but Amy Adams Strunk, a businesswoman who owns the Tennessee Titans. Uh Based on the location, I'm going to say Amy Strunk is not Jewish. Amy Strunk is not Jewish. Yeah. Last but not least, we have the owner of probably the closest NFL team and former residents of Toronto, Terrence Pagula. Uh, the Pagulas, I believe, the, the owners of the Buffalo Bills are not Jewish. They are not Jewish yeah. whatsoever. So I nailed it. 16 for 16. You were uh, 16 for 16 with how many? You knew how many were Jewish. Yeah. I believe we caught three, three Jewish three, owners. Three, three or four Jews. Four Jews. Four, four Jews. So not that many in the AFC. Not that many. Uh, there's Ross. There's Davis. There's Kraft. And uh, the fourth one. Uh, Ross, Davis, Kra Kra Kraft. Uh, Jim Irsay. And Jim Irsay. Of course. Yeah. So let's move on to the NFC. Yeah. I'll tell you this ahead of time, Gabe. The NFC is more Jewish than the AFC in terms yeah. of the ownership. That's good to know. So that'll give you a little clue about who is and who is not Jewish. So I broke it down by divisions. Uh -huh. uh, we'll start with the NFC East. And I'll give you an easy one to start. The Dallas Cowboys owned by Jerry Jones. I'm going to say Mr. Jones is not Jewish. Mr. Jones, obviously, definitely not Jewish. Uh, colorful figure, nonetheless. Still the GM of his team for some reason. And uh, we'll see if they can sign Ezekiel Elliott. Moving on now to the uh, New York Giants, their rival. Yeah. New York Giants are 50-50 owned. One of the few sports teams that has a true 50-50 split. And its two owners are John Mara yeah. and Steve Tisch. So I believe Steve Tisch is Jewish. That's correct. Owner, uh, you know... Uh, the Tisch School. Of, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's the same as the Tisch yeah, family. His Tisch family. Uh, father started uh, Lowe's Hotels. Oh, no way. Yeah, which is a big hotel chain. That Do they owns, also uh, own Lowe's Theaters and perhaps Lowe's Home Improvement? Uh, Not a very Jewish Lowe's business. Theaters, maybe Lowe's Home Improvement is spelled differently and I think only exists in Canada. Right. Yeah. I, th I think Lowe's Theaters is a lot more of a Jewish business than Lowe's Home Improvement. <laughs> maybe. Um, although, interestingly, we will get to another Home Improvement guru uh, further down the list. <laughs> Um, so, uh, but on, Mara, not Jewish. No, Mara's not Jewish. Mara's big Catholic family. Yeah. Uh, they sold half the team or one of the brothers sold half the team to Steve, to, to, Mr. to, Tish. to Steve Tish's family. Uh, not that long ago, moving, uh, just down the seaboard a little bit to the Philadelphia Eagles, recent Super Bowl champions owned by Jeffrey Lurie, Jeff Lurie. That's a tough one. Can, uh, do you have any more information? I, I can give him? you the spelling of Lurie. It's L U R I E. I'm going to say he's Jewish. Jeffrey Lurie is Jewish. And yes. As previously mentioned. Yuffie. Yeah. As previously mentioned, his ex-wife, now ex-wife, is named Christina and is also Jewish. No way. Yeah. What was her uh, last name? I think it was Weiss or Vice. Christina Vice. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. But apparently she now owns a significant chunk of the team because they divorced. <laughs> uh, he was formerly the the, the full owner. But uh, right. his money's from uh, movie theaters. I think family money. Right. From movie theaters and things like that. Uh, Murray, yeah. Finishing out the NFC East, we have the Washington Redskins. Uh, owned Yikes. by owned Do we say that on this podcast? Do we have an official opinion on this podcast? I, I think that might be a topic for another another uh, edition. Yep. But they're owned by Dan Snyder. Uh, I believe Mr. Snyder is, unfortunately, a member of the tribe. Yeah, a bit of a Shonda uh, yeah. with all that's gone on with the name He's a real schnorrer, yeah. that guy. He'll take um, anything you can get. Fam famously... Uh, uh, 
Uh, well, he might sue us for this podcast. Yeah, He's never a litigious mind. man. He made his money in telemarketing and billboards. Um, <laughs> let's move on to the NFC North. Uh, the Chicago Bears are owned by Virginia Hallis McCaskey. I don't think there's a lot of Jews named Hallis, similar or to the lot of Jews named uh, Jefferson or, or whatever it was yeah. before. So uh, the daughter of George Hallis, a longtime owner of the team, yep. uh, not Jewish. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of Jews named Virginia either. No, I don't think so. The Detroit Lions. Yep. Uh, current owner is uh, Martha Firestone Ford, the did the, did the, the Ford widow company, of William Clay Ford. Did the Ford family and the Firestone family get incestuous? Uh, I think you know just one part of the car meaning another part of the car. I don't think it was it was incest. Do we? It's, th- it's no. Proper. Uh, I don't mean sort of like like actual. Just incest. within the auto industry. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that was arranged in a boardroom somewhere? <laughs> Let's hope not. Let's just hope they hang out at the same rich kid car functions. Yeah. 80 years ago when these people got married. Do you think there's some scorned Michelin kid who's really <laughs> wishing he could have married into the Ford family? Oh, boy. I hope not. Uh, but Martha Fires. Dave Ma- Martha- Chrysler is off there, like, counting, you know, upset he missed the dance. Martha Firestone Ford. Not Jewish. I'm not Jewish. Say. There's lots of Jewish Firestones out there, yeah. but the uh, the Firestone tires are not Jews. Yes, yeah. I did not believe It's an old so. Jewish name. So yeah. Gabe is still perfect here. Uh, okay, got a tough one for you. The Green Bay Packers, which are owned by Green Bay Packers Incorporated. They're the only city-owned team. They're the yep. only team that's owned by this community. So if we were to count, here's how I thought about this one. Okay. I think they would count as Jewish-owned if the residents of the city of Green Bay over-index for Jews in America. Okay. I'm going to say that they I'm do I'm going to say they do not. I'm going to say they do not either. Yeah. I don't have any data to back that up. And and we should we should point out here that neither of us had had forewarning. We knew what we were getting to, but neither of us looked up who the Jews are or not. This that's is just right. Quality Judar, sorry, uh, quality Judar that's going on. Um, so the Green Bay Packers Incorporated, I would say, not Jewish. No, I, I don't think so. I think that the Jews who live in the Midwest um, kept going. Yeah, if that makes sense, as they made their way across America. I guess I don't know. I, I think Minnesota is having more Jews than Wisconsin. Maybe it's just because of Dylan. Probably Dylan Lewis Black, the yeah. comedian. Well, moving on to Minnesota, their owner is Ziggy Vilf. Ziggy Vilf uh, sounds like he could be my grandfather. Yes. Uh, I'm going to say Ziggy Vilf is Jewish. Ziggy Vilf is Jewish. He's a, uh, he or was, will. He's a Holocaust survivor, isn't he? I don't believe so. I think you might be too young for that. Um, but I thought he, he might was be like the child born of in a camp or born in a refugee camp born in a or DP something camp like or something that. Like yeah, that. born in a, a DP camp. Uh, we'll have to get our uh, producer to fact check that one. He, I, I think of him as, as being the uh, NFL owner who looks the most like Wario from the <laughs> Mario games. Um, and uh, looking up Ziggy Wilf now, he was born in Germany in 1950. So you're right. His parents are Polish Jews and Holocaust survivors. Yeah. Uh, and he was born shortly after. So uh, wouldn't want to say anything bad about him. Uh, but I am going to mention that he was found guilty of breaking New Jersey racketeering laws <laughs> in order to pay $32 million in restitution for his mobster-like uh, business tendencies, apparently. Do they have to do with the football team? Uh, no, I don't think it had anything to do with the football team. He made his money in real estate. Uh, so it's just, you know. Oh, sure he just did. Just not great business te- practices. Yeah. Made his money in sanitation. Made his money in uh, uh, car dealerships. Okay, now he's making his money in football, so it's all right. good. Uh, all right, let's move on to the NFC South, to, uh, to Hot Atlanta, owned by Arthur Blank. I think Arthur Blank's Jewish. Arthur Blank is Jewish. Yeah. And as previously mentioned, he's the other, he is the home, uh, the home improvement guru. He founded Home Depot. That's where no his way. money's from. Yeah. Home Depot. Yeah. He was one is of the Is his founders. name Blank or is it like Blankenstein or Blankenstein? Oh, good question. Or I, I think it, it, it must have like been that. something longer. Yeah. Uh, but now it's just Arthur Blank. Yeah. Um, Does he go by Art or Arthur? I think he goes by, I, I don't know if he goes by Art actually. He must a little bit. I, I feel like I think I've most, always I think heard most him called Arthur. Jewish Arthurs go by Art. Garfunkel, sure. Shamsky. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a good list. Uh, I'm sure he'd be happy to be included among them. Yeah. Uh, moving down the coast a little bit to, uh, or up uh, up the coast. Yeah. Yeah, my geography's right here. Up the coast to the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> I don't think they're on the coast. Uh, you're right. Well, Charlotte, the Queen Char- City. Yeah, you're right. Anyways, Carolina Panthers, uh, the most recently sold team in the NFL, currently owned by a guy named David Tepper. David Tepper sounds Jewish. That yeah. sounds quite tribal. Definitely a Jew. Uh, he is actually almost the exact same age as my dad and grew up like really close to him in Pittsburgh. No way. I think I asked him about him one time and he said he had no idea who that was. We should was. ask Jonathan Mayo. See if John yeah. Mayo knows who he is. But he's, Jonathan he, Mayo also didn't know your dad. So n- No, that, that's reasonable <laughs> enough. They were different enough in age. But he's a hedge fund manager. He's worth like $12 billion, Okay. Um, according to Wikipedia. And he recently bought the Panthers. I think he had to outbid a lot of other people. And it was just like he had a lot of money. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, there was a time where even having that much money wouldn't get you into the NFL. Is it no, true? that's true. And now it will. Al Davis uh, might if you want to buy first. buy the team off of a uh, you know old racist sexist uh, jerk like Jerry Richardson. Exactly. Uh, moving down to the Bayou Bayou uh, Gumbo Gumbo, uh, <laughs> the New Orleans Saints, who are owned by Gail Benson. I don't think Gail Benson. Gail is Benson is not Jewish. She is the widow of Tom Benson, also not Jewish. Uh, and the last team in the NFC South, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, owned by, uh, well, now owned by the Glazer family. So Malcolm Glazer is definitely Jewish. We've yeah. talked about him previously, owner yeah. of Manchester United. That's right. Uh, he died in 2014, unfortunately. Uh-huh. He made his money in commercial real estate and banking, yep. uh, but uh, and he owned the Buccaneers since 95. Yep. Now his family has a controlling interest in the team. He, he was Jewish. Um, so let's move over to the last division, the NFC West, and start with the Arizona Cardinals, formerly the Chicago Cardinals and St. Yep. Louis Cardinals after that. And their owner is Bill Bid- Bidwell. This is tough. I don't think the Bidwells are Jewish. The Bidwells are not Jewish. Uh, wow. His dad was Chicagoan. His yep. dad was apparently a uh, you know a businessman who had ties to Al Capone, Charlie Bidwell. A real tough yeah. man. I think that's how he got the team. But they're one of those teams that's – sorry, they're one of those families that has owned the team for a long time. They got in at a time when yep. when it was not so hard to own an NFL team if you could afford it. And uh, He bid well on the team. Yeah. Uh, next on to the LA Rams and someone we've talked about before, Stan Kroenke. Not Jewish. Not Jewish, as, yeah. we, as we talked about. Surprisingly not Jewish. That's right. We talked about the NBA owners. His wife owns the Denver Another Nuggets. gatekeeper of kosher food at the stadiums. Yeah. Not Screw Jewish, but has, has been mis- misreported as being Jewish. Uh-huh. Um, another one we already talked about, another multi-sport owner, Seattle Seahawks, owned by the Paul Allen Trust. All Paul right. Allen Trust, not Jewish. Not, not Jewish. Paul Allen was not Jewish. Yeah. Family, as far as I can tell. His name was Allen no Paul. There. I think he was Jewish. Yeah, that makes more sense. Alan Paul would be Jewish. All right, Gabe, you're perfect. Can you match my perfect record? Going to San Francisco and... Uh, the How 40- many do we have left? This is the last one. Last one! Yeah. San Francisco 49ers, their owner, John York. I thought it was the York family. Not Jewish. The York family can't no, be Jewish. No, not Jewish. Yeah, Good. you're right. So you nailed it. Wow, the mensch warmers are perfect. 32 for 32 32 in this for one. 32. I feel pretty proud of us. We did, we've, you know, I think our as, as we've done this podcast, as we've gone more into it, our, our, our senses have gotten a little sharper and That's more attuned true. to the Jews out there and the non-Jews out there. So That's true. Uh, I'm glad we got them all and nothing too controversial on the football owners. But uh, maybe we'll come back and do uh, a full slate of, uh, of hockey or basketball. Hockey could be a little more starts. interesting. Not that many hockey owners that we've are Jews. T- we've talked about... During the playoffs, but we haven't talked about the whole team. Yeah. Um, our local Larry Tannenbaum, who, if you're listening, we'd love to have you on the podcast. <laughs> uh, he, he's definitely Jewish. Uh, we've talked about Jeremy Jacobs, owner of the Boston Bruins. He's yeah. Jewish. Eugene Melnick, Mike Jacobs All-Star, not Jewish, owner of the Ottawa Senators. But what are you talking about? Eugene Melnick's Jewish. He's not. No. Yeah. We'll have to look into this further. That's right. Our producer seems very excited at this conversation. He's not Jewish, Eugene Melnick. Well, we'll have to save it's very that. very surprising. He's Hungarian. We'll have to save that and more for our uh, next episode of the Mensch Warmers. I think it's about time for us That's to sign right. off, Gabe. I do want to leave this, and I'm going to dedicate this this saying to Sage Rosenfels, the great 10-game player of former Jewish uh, uh, NFL quarterback. But while Still I was Still Jewish, just formerly a quarterback. Well, I was Googling... Uh, NFL Jewish players. If you type in list of NFL players who, number three is our Jewish. Okay. And I think that's Google knowing what I'm going to suggest. I think it's, yeah, I think it's predicting your searches. That's yeah. not a general Correct. global trend. However, what it predicted my searches, number one was list of NFL players who are dead. Okay. Number two, list of NFL players who own horses. Oh, okay. And number three was list of NFL players who are Jews. So if there's a dead Jewish NFL player who owned, who owned a horse at some point in time, that's right in your that's wheelhouse right as far as Google, Google wheelhouse. Thinks. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thanks as always for joining us. You can find us on Facebook uh, at the CJN Podcast Network. Or on Twitter at Manchwarmers. You can find us at cjnews.com. We are brought to you, as always, by the Canadian Jewish News. Um, please take a listen to our sister podcast, the Canadian Jewish Schmooze. It's hosted by our producer, Alex Rose, and our supervising producer, Michael Freeman. Yeah. Uh, if you have comments, you know, we got some great feedback on our boxing pay- on our boxing uh, episode that we recently posted on Facebook again. That's right. Uh, we'd love to have your feedback and comments. Please reach out to us on Twitter or Facebook. And uh, join us next time where we will discover whether or not Eugene Melnick is Jewish or not. That's right. And uh, if you want to follow with the contest we mentioned last week, if you can name how many lepers came to Jesus for, uh, came back to thank Jesus for curing them, you win salvation. Thank you.
See you next time, people.